evening. Thank you very much for joining as usual. Um, the focus of this program, like I said, is to ensure that we slowly build an ecosystem that affords the working professionals, whether they are employees or they are entrepreneurs, to afford them the opportunity to get coaching services for free. Now, the beauty of this is that the vision of this program is such that by the time we are done with this program, or by the time we have achieved full momentum, it will be a platform where people can run to as the events are occurring. So you notice that even if you have a paid coach, what happens is you have to book a session, you have to then make sure the person is available, and then you go there. Meanwhile, there are instances that calls for immediate action. So the whole essence of this movement is that slowly, you can build a community where you need to take a decision, you are confronted with a situation, you can drop your issue, somebody will be online to chime in, and then you can get the benefit of crowdsourcing in terms of people's ideas. So that's why it is all about. It bears repetition that certain things are critical to, to, this, to this event or to the way we are trying to run. And I just want to run through them very briefly. For people who've been here repeatedly, it may sound like repetition, but please bear with us. Because the whole essence is that everybody gets it and they will start talking about it. So like I said, this is not a training. Even though we are sharing knowledge, this is more around focusing on real life, everyday practical issues and using that as a learning point for individuals so that when you get to that situation, you can remember or come back and check. As you found, we usually we open this room latest 15 minutes, but typically we try to do 30 minutes before the time. And then five minutes before we go live, latest banters can start. If you know people that are in the room, you can always start your banter as you get in. But the whole structure of the program is such that the first 15 minutes will just be on a presentation, something very brief to provide perspectives for what we are about to engage for that day. And then the rest of the day will be an open mic kind of session where everybody can then chime in on that topic and maybe any topic of interest that may be related. And um, so that we can go around the whole piece as we get bigger, we can keep contributions to two minutes or less so that nobody just hijacks the microphone and allows everybody to contribute. And then like we found now, we are on social media, we are on um, um, Instagram, we are on Twitter, we are having some problem with our Twitter account, but we just opened a, um, a Telegram account, which even makes it easier to get that instant feel to the response. And we are hoping as we get bigger, that we can have new volunteering to do different things so that it will not, the idea is not to have one person talking. So when we get big enough, we hope to bring in different speakers that will come and anchor different things and um, we will see how we proceed with that. Okay, so that is an overview of, of what we are focusing, what, what the agenda of this um, initiative is. And before I go too far, it is necessary to mention that the organization powering this initiative is called DLI, Development, Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. Mm -hmm. This is an NGO that is committed, passionate about capital and human development. And we hope to achieve this one man at a time, one community at a time. So that's the whole, whole essence of what we are trying to do. We have a lot of initiatives on, ongoing, some in schools, some virtually like this. We have over, 
Can I remember that maybe about 300 different videos on our YouTube channel that covers a whole lot of things from employment to entrepreneurship. You may want to check out our YouTube channel, Development and Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. And it's okay for you to also feel free to share um, this link or the information with as many people as you can. It's, it's a little way of giving back to the working community. So today, our focus is on free riders. The truth of the matter is that if you have a team that is more than three, between three and five people, if you do not take care, there will be free riders. So either as the entrepreneur employing them or as the leader leading the team in case of paid employment, or you are a member of that team, it is useful for you to have a good idea of how to manage this situation. So typically we like to situate this with a story and the story here is that of a young man that is called Kayode. Summary of the story is that he has an eight man team. They have an ERP project to roll out. The ERP stands for uh, enterprise resource planning. It's, it's a system that captures usually different things that the organization does from accounting to operation to warehousing to logistics, depending on the industry or what the company is doing. And this project they are to do is to run for 12 months. Now, the snag is that it will be different departments contributing their own bit to make that project happen, to make that project happen. And um, Kyle Day, who is a team lead in that organization, called these people, briefed them on what is to come, explained, got their buy-in, and the way everybody responded, he was even excited and thinking that, oh, this, this is going to be an easy piece. We will just run through this. But what do you find when he decided to do a quick departmental check before the organizational review? We realized that there was a free rider on that team whose name is Jide. And by the time they checked, what Jide did approximated about 20% of what he was supposed to do. Now, this was a day before the review, two days before the review session. So you can imagine the panic that everybody went into. And this is a place where departments will have to come and defend what they've done. And it is very easy for, for people to start feeling humiliated. So in order to avoid that situation, everybody had to dive in and then be picking up the, the laps and the gaps that Jude had created. Now, of course, you can be sure there will be no smiling faces in that kind of situation. Jude, too, appreciating that, decided to do a peace apology. Got everybody pizza, promised to do better. But now, Kyle knows better. So by the time they were going through the second wave, the second um, phase of the project, Kyle again went through the briefing, picked out Jide to say, do you get it? Jide said, yes, I do. Even though it was beginning to look like, how are you picking on me? But what then happened? By the time they were to do another review meeting for the project, because of the past experience, Kyle Ode now decided to hold that review five days before, not two days like the first time. And when they checked again, they realized that Jide had done it again. He, 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 he didn't even go near 20% this time. And what made everybody more upset was that he was there when other teammates were complaining about how their side was complex, he saw them keeping very late nights, coming back and saying how, telling stories about how they walked all through the night just to keep up with their time. He didn't help anybody. He did not voice that he also was behind or he needed help. 
only for everybody to now leave, if only for him to now leave it to when there was another meeting for the team to discover what was going on, what was going on. Now, you can imagine what everybody will be feeling. Kyle did the team lead now has to beg everybody to please just help me this time. Let's get this done. When we are done with this, we will come back to fix the situation. But we are a team that pride ourselves in what we do. Let's not allow GD to mess us up. And try to pacify the guys to say, okay, I'll come through for you. Don't worry, I'll give you a, a day off if you need to. Now, they managed to wade through that problem. As you can see, GD here holding his head. What do I do? This is not <clears throat> a short project where you think that, oh, in five days will be done. This is a 12, 24 months project. How long is this going to continue? Now, GD has been here for over two years. If I fire him or recommend him for, for dismissal, how does that look on his CV? He can no longer claim, he can no longer rough it through like it never happened. He's, he has a young family. What happens? At the same time, this is not sustainable. If, if I don't fire GD, what if GD fires me or GD ends up leading to other team members being fired? This scenario cannot continue. That is what Kayode is saying. So the question is, what should Kayode do? Okay, so if you've worked long enough and you've shared, you've had um, a large enough team, you will realize that free riding is something that is extremely common. And um, the question is, how do you solve this problem? How do you ensure that when you meet people like this, you take care of your side of the business without also letting them ruin or destroy your reputation? What should, what should you do in this kind of situation? So the summary of the problem, just to put it in one word, is about how you need, what you need to do or how you can achieve maximum team productivity. Now, this is the common problem. As you will find, every, every entrepreneur, every organization, every business, the biggest headache is, how do you win? How do you build that winning team? Is the, it's so simple to describe, very, very difficult to, de, to, to, to execute, to deliver which is why this is a very interesting frame, um, framing for what we're about to talk about. And I hope you'll be able to pick one or two things out here. So achieving maximum team productivity. Now, question, how do you handle them? Let's quickly touch on some research that we dug up in preparation for this program. Like I said, once you have a group, if you've gone through the university in Nigeria or anywhere, and you have any group project, you can relate to this. Once you are more than one, anything can happen. And you, somebody there sees that, oh, there are some smart students here who care about their grades. That's the, that's the end. They will go away, and when it is time to submit, they will show up and make sure that their matric number ends up on the on the on the on the on the report. Okay. And it is a common problem that everybody has to deal with. Now, the point of research which is relevant here is that if you don't provide ongoing feedback, you will be undermining not just the free rider but the entire team. And that is the concept around which the solution to this problem lies. So if we just then move quickly to what you call the DIY, which is the do-it-yourself tips, we will start from how to resolve this situation and then go to a set, go to the side that speaks to how do you even prevent it from happening? So the first part of this conversation is the resolution. And the second part is how to prevent. So by way of resolution, the first thing is to try and diagnose. You need to diagnose. 
it's okay now to hear this story and be wondering, oh, how careless can Jide be? How sloppy can he be? He's just giving everybody headache. But you don't know what he's dealing with. In fact, if you dig deeper, we found out that Jide had a sick child. We found out that he had a child. Like I said, he had a, 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 a young family. His first child has been sickly and they've not been able to determine what's even wrong with him, not to talk of starting to treat him. But because he kept hoping that he could finish, he could finish. And he, he cared about his projection and his position and the kind of reputation he has at work. He's been reluctant to announce to everybody that he's not able to help. So by the time Kayode got closer and found out that he has actually been keeping very late vigil because the, the wife would take care of this child from the morning till evening. And by the time he gets in, the wife who is even yet to recover from the trauma of the cesarean section that led to the birth of the child has to be helped. So he, he, he ends up running the evening shift, running the weekend shift. Not only is he wasted when it comes to work, mentally is drained. Now, you can see how this completely changes the picture. So there's a need to diagnose. You need to go closer. Call this GD guy and engage him. What exactly is the problem? Is that something I need to know? Because if there is a bigger problem, the person you think you should be scolding may actually be somebody you should be cutting a lot of slack. Particularly if you say he's been there five years. So diagnose. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. By the time you find out what is going on, you will then be in a better situation to know exactly what you need to do. So diagnosis is extremely important. Now, once you then have your diagnosis completed, you then now need to explore all other options. So the question is, uh, what can I do to help you to be more productive? Are there things you find easier to do? It could be that there's a part of that project that is going to fit the current situation that GD is confronted with better. Maybe there's a part of it that is just mechanical, collate and sort. And there's another part of the project that has to do a lot of thinking and a lot of quiet. And maybe what they've given him because of his skill set is the one that requires thinking and quiet. But there's no quiet in his head. There's no quiet in his home. There's no quiet in his pocket. So he cannot have a quiet, any, he cannot have the required quiet to do the job, but he can sort and make anything that doesn't require that, that heavy level of thinking. So you may need to restructure the job, give him some thought, or even let the team know that, look, today is dealing with one, two, three, and you'll be shocked as to how quickly everybody will write and say, you know what, we will carry you this time. Let's pray that the boy will get better and then come back to work and join us with the workload and nobody will know what's going on. Now, you will be shocked that even though the team is willing to carry GD now, that empathy, that consideration, that, that identification with the situation can actually give him more peace in his head than all the money in this world. And you'll be shocked that not only will he be more willing to contribute right now, he may end up being more willing to even do more in the future by the time this goes out because you are beginning to build a family, you are beginning to build a lot of loyalty by that, by that situation. So based on what you find when you diagnose, you need to then come up with different options. This is not something that can be prescribed. The situation you find in diagnosis is what would define the treatment. And then based on the options you put on the table, you can do A, you can do B, you can do C. You then need to consult and decide on, okay, this is the preferred option. And whatever that option is, you then need to go ahead and do it. Now, it's also possible that in the middle of all of this, you find out GD has nothing to lay him on. I mean, to lay claim on. He is just a typical free rider. He would rather 
hide behind work, be quiet and see how it can benefit or leverage other people's effort. If that is what you find, then what we're about to talk about in the next phase, which is the prevention kicks in. Now, this one to four step that we have identified here, the earlier you do them, the better. Because as you will see in the closing code, free riders, they're on their way to somewhere. The only problem is they don't know where they are going. So your job as the team leader, the entrepreneur, is to see how you can quickly show them the way so that they can carry on with their journey. They don't mess up with your journey and they can enjoy their own journey. Okay, now, but from a conceptual point of view, how do you even do it grounds up to ensure that you don't have to conf be confronted with this kind of situation? It's a quick, quick, easy thing that you can do. And the ultimate bus stop is that you must build an accountability framework. I have said it to those that I've worked for, and I'm saying it again. If there's anything that can transform an organization overnight, anything, there's only one thing you can do right now to turn around the result of your organization, build an accountability framework, which is what I call the performance management system. Just build the accountability framework. If you build it and you have the courage to implement it, I can assure you, not only will you build a fiercely winning team, provided every other thing is in place, you will eliminate the likelihood of free riders in your organization. Now, how do you, how do you go about doing that? Number one is you need to make tasks clear to the people you are giving tasks to. Either they're your executive team. I can see Mr. Clean is here. It's a privilege to have you here. Thank you for joining. I would like you to say a few words later. So it, okay, it, doesn't, mat well it done, doesn't matter where your organization is. We are talking to your C-level. We are talking to the gate man. Make the task clear. In my language, I call it define done, which is a scrum language. You must define done because done can mean different things to different people. So I, I use the example of open that door. Open that door can be go and find the key and put it in the hole. To somebody else, it can be um, turn, the, turn the lock and make sure that the key is the right key. So somebody else, it can be turn the lock, turn the knob and just try it and make sure that the door is not jammed. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, it can be open that door and leave it ajar. Everybody is interpreting open the door. In the leadership training that we do, we say communication is about making meaning. It's not just about exchange of information, it's about making meaning common. So you need to define done because when you don't define done, you let the free rider have corners and shadows where they can pretend, oh, I didn't understand it that way. Oh, I didn't get it that way. So the first thing is make sure the task is clear, make sure the done is clear. Done is when the money drops in the account. Done is when the customer calls that he's happy. Done is when the vehicle goes there and then there's a report to say it has been packed and key has been submitted. It matters not where you are going. I mean, what the task is, let done be very clear. Then, this is very powerful. Again, it goes to agile project management or agile way of operation. And we teach this when we teach delegation. There is a science to delegation. Delegation is not just me or somebody's table and say, I wish you all the best. That's not delegation. So it does not matter. Build, check, check, check into your operations. In fact, it makes everybody safe. Because even for those who are not free riders, sometimes they are encumbered and they're overwhelmed with different things that they are thinking, I will catch, I will catch up with it later. And they may not be able to do that. And they put everybody inside the water. So once you define done, let there be a check system. One of the keys of Scrum is the daily stand-up meeting. It's very, very relevant. It may not be daily, but there must be that regularity of checking so that everybody knows everybody is awake. Then once you've defined done and you have a clear level, a clear basis for checking, you must then create 
a proper escalation channel. Everybody must know if this doesn't work, within 24 hours you are missing this, you must talk to that. Within this period, you must talk to this. You can call, you can send SMS, you can send WhatsApp, you can do email, so that somebody is not wanting to say, ah, oh, I don't know how to reach the person, or oh, I don't know if it is too late, or oh, I don't know how to do it. So let the, because the whole essence is not to catch anybody as free rider. The whole essence of the leader and the entrepreneur is to ensure that you get the value for what you are paying. Because even if you are going to fire that person after one month, you have paid one month's salary for nothing. So let there be a clear escalation channel and then there must be clear consequences. We call it cake and cane. If you do this, you get this cake. If you, do this, if you don't do this, you get this cake. It must be clear. For every minute you come late, this is what happens. For every day you miss, this is what happens. For every garment that goes back, this is what happens. For any customer that complains, this is what happens. And for every compliment you get, this is what happens. It is clear. Get going. So there is no English about this. Once you have this thing, the last one is easier, which is do it. Just enforce it. Whatever you say you are going to do, make sure you do it. Once you do it, and the guy knows. You see, I keep giving this example. The reason why Nigerians that cannot obey rules in Nigeria, why they will go abroad and be obeying rules, is not because those countries have, uh, have turned them into saints. It's because they know that the chances of being caught is very, very high. So once you know the chance of being caught is very high, what happens? Everybody behaves. So when they're out there, they know how to tow the line. As they climb the plane and they're coming back, they, they, they pick up their misbehavior again. And this is the same, the same thing you need to build. Once people come in, it doesn't mean you will not have free riders. It means that they will not be able to stay. And it means that you will not be the one to chase them, which is the, which is the beautiful part of this because Firing and getting rid of the guys is a lot of pain. It's not very straightforward. So it, with this process, when you find a free rider, you will not need to call them the free rider. The label will come out, they will know. The consequences, they will know. It will not be you announcing it or enforcing it. And that way, you will slowly build a team where there will be no space for free riders because everybody knows what is coming. And like I said here, if condition persists, consult your doctor. So if, I, if, you are, if you are in the employee space and you have tried this and it's not working, take it above to your boss because there then need to be necessary. You may not be able to unilaterally pull the trigger. And if you're an entrepreneur, you know what to do because there is no English about it. It's, it's, it's cash and carry, CAC. The guy doesn't want to work. Like I said, you'll see just now, he's on a journey, help him to get to where he's going to. So if you're an entrepreneur, what you said applies to you, there's nothing to add. A team member, and that's the last bit of this, of, this, of this conversation, and you find a free rider, usually some will get emotional and then they start getting agitated and then they start worrying and then they start thinking that their job to be dissipating energy on that free rider. Please don't do that. If I'm a free rider on, on, on your team, focus on your job. Remember that a man cannot do more than what a man can do. There's only so much you can do, even with your beg, even with your boss begging, begging. Focus on your job. Don't let anybody lower your vibration. If anything lowers the vibration, make sure you chunk it. In that situation, opportunities will arise. You will get opportunities to do things you normally wouldn't have been allowed to do. So it means you have the opportunity of learning something you probably will not be able to, you will not have been able to learn if that guy was pulling his weight. So see the opportunity. And then as you are doing this, you to them must see how it's affecting other people and make sure that you do not become one of, you do not become a free rider yourself. Because like I say in one of my trainings, there are four classes of people. I won't go through the two details, but in every organization, as you have the competent, you have the incompetent. Even if the business does not do anything about it right now, at some point, you can imagine with this high level of cost now, diesel, almost 1,000 naira. Cooking gas, how much? Maybe 12, um, what do you call that? 12,000, what are they call it? calling it now? 12.5 kg. Um, transport going through the roof. 
all the companies in Nigeria mostly are running on diesel, so that cost gets transferred to every single thing. Is in, is is crazy. So you now find businesses shining their eye and wondering, do we need five people here? Do we need four people here? It will show. So you need to remember that everybody works for him or herself. Without a back of your mind, therefore, if you have a free rider member, you have the choice of how you interpret it. Don't choose the destructive and negative interpretation. Choose the interpretation that increases your vibration because in the final analysis, everybody works for him or herself. So in closing, free riders, they're on their way. That's the problem. But the problem is they do not know where they are going. So whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a team lead, your job is to help them find their way very quickly so that they can leave you alone to do your job. And then hopefully, they will travel far and fast enough to realize that if they don't change their ways, very soon they will go obsolete. So that is the conclusion of the, of the presentation part of this session, which is focusing on free riders. Now the floor is open. The next minute, the next few minutes is, is for the open mic where we can then all chime in if you have any question or you have any experience you want to share, the floor is open. You can share with us. And um, we don't have to go all the way till 8. So it's, it's, once we have exhausted our content, we call it a day. The floor is open, anybody. Thank you so much for joining. Mr. Clinis, you want to say something to us? We are fortunate to have the CEO of Cleaners Dry Cleaners here, Mr. Ani Bukwande Bayo. Thank you so much for joining. You have you have a word for us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for all you do to to make uh, to make to make businesses um, upscale and for people learning development everywhere. God bless you. Uh, I think. Uh, this, I came in the middle of the presentation, another call came and just hit me off the call, off the, um, the Zoom line and I just quickly had to come back on. But uh, this um, <laughs> free, free riders, uh, I think um, it's, it's the order of the day and uh, thank you for using this platform to address um, and highlighting heavily on um, what to expect and how to deal with them. We find them everywhere, especially when we have a lot of um, like Gen Zs. They want to be everywhere. They want to do everything. And um, yet um, everybody's looking for the kind of freedom and they just want to be themselves. And uh, for organizations that's got goals and um, clear objectives, it's very difficult finding those people to really sit and um, journey on with you. But um, thank you for some highlights. Uh, you need to clear uh, what I'm taking out of this is um, clarity in communication and expectation. Just make it clear. What are you expecting? I like that part. Yes. Yeah, I like that part where you were talking. Um, uh, what do you mean? I mean, are you saying shut the door or open the door? Is it go get the key, go look for the key or get a machete? Don't, you must just, they need it clear. Don't assume. They can decode what you're saying. Just come out, and you must have those um, and that junction. And that's where I, I missed it out. I will maybe ask for that line where you had um, the check and check that that pencil, broken pencil part to make a yeah, hole. That, uh, that was I where just, I was hit up. Yes. I will just go back. Um, I will just go back a bit now. So this is it. This yes. all you are building up is accountability framework. So make sure done is clear. Yeah. Make sure you have a check system. Make sure you build an escalation channel so the guy doesn't come back and say, I do not know who to talk to or how to escalate. Let the consequences for the behavior be clear and then make sure you act on whatever you have defined. Now, this enforcement is very simple now, but this is where sentiments come in. Oh, he's married. Oh, he just had a child. Oh, his mother is sick. Oh, he's been working here 20 years. If you enforce... From get-go, you will realize that you will not even have to deal with many of this because either they are going to move on their own 
But when you need to move them, there will be less emotions and less fracas. So this is the slide that we use. Yes, you can go on. So thank you very much. And in fact, with, I'm sorry, with your permission, um, let me, with the permission, let me officially ask to take, let me take a picture of this because this summarizes everything. Am I permitted? Yes, I'll go ahead. Uh, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's all right. Like, right. And I'm also, I'm, I'm happy to take your picture with it as well from my, from my screen. So like, <laughs> yeah, when I share it, I mean, I just post it on my HR group and um, okay. it can be um, a five minutes learning, learning, um, learning tonic for 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 monday that's um, right executive meeting you know that um, this is something i was able to pick over the weekend um thank you very much for this i just stumbled on the link and i saw it on your okay. um what's it called your updates and i said oh master cannot be doing this and some of us are not uh, it's an opportunity to learn something and thank you very much for this framework thank it works you perfectly for, for, this, for this time thank and you. god bless you sir thank you thank very you much yes this the floor is open. The floor is open. I just picked on him because it's not usual. It's not every day you find the CEO spending 30 minutes with us. So thank you so much for coming. Any question, any comment? Can you relate? Do you want to tell us any story relating to this? Any additional insight? If there is none, then we can just thank everybody for coming. I can relate. You can relate, okay, you can let's hear you. Yes, okay, so before people came in, I mentioned something about having having two official students. Yes. So one of them, this was the agreement when she came, actually gave her a discount on the fee. Trading fee. Yes, and the agreement was that she would, we, we have classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and she she comes she comes four days a week I, I give her one day off to because she also has customers just cater for so i give her one day off to cater for her customers then she comes four days a week two days out of four we have classes i teach her stuff the remaining two days she works for me so for those two days she's going to work for me i would then give her transport fare so we agreed she would take one k every day she comes okay so i now found out that she she comes late i think the first day she we lost you you think the first day she Okay, maybe she's on her phone and a call is coming in. Any question? Sorry, we lost you. We lost you. We lost you. So on the first, I can't remember. On the first day, she. Okay, so initially she was coming eight and she was punctual, but she started dragging back, she started coming late. Okay. And then, so I had to now reason with her. She could have um, problems or like it, it might not be convenient for her. So. We have lost you again. Mr. John Abbe, are you here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Inka, we are losing you on and off. Oh, she started dragging back and then what? Can you hear me clearly now? I can hear you now. We can hear you. At least I can hear you now. She started okay. dragging back. She and started then what? dragging back. She started coming late. Yes. So I tried to reason with her at that point and then called her and then had a conversation with her and she confided in me that the, the eight was actually not feasible for her, that 10 was better. So consequently, we had to move the closing time so that either way nobody loses. And then 10 was fine. As time went on, she started coming 10, 30, 11 again. And at that point, okay, that, that, that when you were talking about consequences for actions, at that part, I could relate. So I now called her again and told her that, see, if I tell you to resume by 2 p.m. every day, you will still come late. And this is not me throwing stones at you. I also had that weakness of late coming. I, I am very, very, 
like I'm, 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 I was an ardent late comer, but I had to consciously work on it. So I gave her tips on how I worked on it and I expect her to also work on it. So I told her that that 10 is 10. If she comes 10.01, the tea fair she's supposed to get for that day, she was not going to get it. <laughs> oh, and what now happened? And uh, okay, she became emotional and all of that. You know how women can be. But like from what? this, from this, from this, um, from this presentation, I have, I have uh, what may I'm taking away. Like I can relate to most of the things you have said, but what I'm taking away is the enforcement. When you say stuff, don't let your emotion or sentiment get into the part of you, you know, enforcing it. So personally, personally, that's what I'm taking away from this. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if John or any other body wants to say anything, but. I run, so part of what I do is I run projects. And I believe a lot in Agile because it just makes you super, super efficient. Now, one of the rules, one of the rules of, one of the rules of Scrum is what you call the stand-up meeting. Now, stand-up meeting says at a particular place, at a particular time, every day, everybody will meet. And then when we are setting up that Scrum meeting, we'll say, this, the person that's the timekeeper, I used to be the, uh, pro, uh, the Scrum Master setting up the Scrum team. Sometimes I'm also the product owner, but I, I set up the team. So I tell everybody, check your time because your time will have to sync with mine. Okay, one. Two, when you are late, what do we do? We all agree. I remember one project where we said, once we are once you are late, you will buy snacks of two, 200 naira for every team member. And we all got it that if you don't do it, we will deduct it at source. It's like magic. People will leave their car rolling and they are rolling up the staircase. And we define done. To be present in the meeting is not to be coming through the door. To be punctual means you have sat down. So even if you walk through the door once the time changes on my hand, you are late. You won't find anybody coming late. It's not possible. So once you have taken the time to lay this out and you have the courage, it's very difficult. But once you enforce it and people know that you are serious about the enforcement, it's transformational. Any other contribution? Any other contribution? Femi, you have anything to say? Anybody, anybody has anything to say? Doi, I can see you. Thanks for joining. Ruth. Okay. Uh, do, do, Anybody wants to add anything? Otherwise, you just wrap it up. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay, so it's a good one. So we one of the things I just want to say is it's good to combine this with what we learned last month because sometimes you can also have a free rider that they need to be connected. Yes. So, but using the last scenario where you have a stand up, so there is to be checks even in your small team. There is a check before you take it to the upper management or the upper level. So even, even within the small team, there's a check to the slackers. Like if, you know, that example is very good. You have to buy snack for the day or you buy something for the week. And if it's not done, since everybody has agreed, it could be deducted that the, you know, you can deduct it from the source. So the other one is, it could also be a learning. Sometimes it has worked for me by being a learning path to learn some things that, Normally, it's not your line of action. Exactly. Yes, exactly. You can. You one thing you should be careful also is you don't get burned out. So that, but you could form a, you know, technical click or a business click. Not a click. When I say click now, in a positive minded, so that if A does not do that job, these three of yeah. us will do it to our own benefit in the long run, maybe in the short run, but. Also making every team member to know that James did not do that job because, because he did not do it, Funke, John, and, you know, uh, Florence are I doing know. it. Yeah. So, so that keeps the teams to know that what that person is not doing, three of us are backing it up. We are, you know, catching up with it. And it needs to be discussed at every Stand up too, which is right. which is very important because the stand up makes everybody to be on the same level, and for the negative occurrences to be discussed and have feedback too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any con any other contribution question? 
Any more? Okay, so do I take it that we are fine? John, you are here. Do you want to just pull up the survey now? Looks like um, we are done for today. Can you quickly just put up the survey? Please just hold on a sec. It's a three, three part survey. Please just complete it so that we just learn and see how to get better. And then I think that will be it for today. So please complete the survey, complete the survey, complete the survey, complete the survey. Complete the survey, complete the survey, complete the survey once we're done with that. Peter, you want to say something? Is that Ruth? Is that Ruth? Can't hear you though, in case you are talking. So please just complete the survey. And then once you're done, I would just like to thank every one of you. Like I said, check out the YouTube channel, Development, Development Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. Um, we are very passionate about transformation and capacity building. One man at a time, one community at a time. Feel free to share this information with everybody. Like I said, from the beginning, is just to create a channel where working, um, this working class people, whether you are employment or entrepreneur, where you can get quick coaching. We can crowdsource coaching. So we have a Telegram page where um, to all that have been registered, we can share it with you. You can just jump in. So the beauty of this is that you don't have to wait for an appointment with your coach, even if you have one. You can quickly drop something that you can leverage on people's experience and then we'll be there to provide clarifications as required. And many times it's worth, it's worth it's like they say that somebody, a fire marshal, who knows how to use a fire extinguisher on the site of a fire incident is more important than a battalion of, of firemen who will come one hour later. So the whole idea is you can get that coaching, that input, that advice as you need it. And so feel free to share. We just think that it's a big need in the, in, the, in the society right now. That's what we are trying to meet. So it will be great to have as many people as possible to join. Now, one last thing before you go. Please, if you have your PVC, please, can you raise, can you raise your hand? Look for, your, but for the hand raise button and, and raise your hand. Please, if you have your PVC, if you have it with you, I didn't say you have even registered though. I have my PVC with me. Please raise your hand. I know some people are not in Nigeria, so I'm not including you. Now, if you have registered, but you are waiting to collect your PVC, you can join them to raise your hand. Please, let's do it. Please, let's do it. Please, let's do it. So only two people. Okay, please, I'm begging everybody here. Okay, three now. I'm begging everybody here, please. I'm going to say this thing. I'm going to say it three times. After God is government. After God is government. After God is government. Government determines whether you are born or whether you are really dead and everything that happens in between. Politics is too important to be left to politicians. I beg you in the name of God, please, they are saying they are going to continue registration now because there's a court injunction. Please don't look. See, the trouble of diesel becoming 1,000 naira is more painful than whatever is going to take you to get your PVC. Yes, don't look at the trouble. Just realize that if you do not get involved, in a kitty, only about 18% of registered voters voted. And that's it. The 18 people have decided for the 80%. That's all. So the, the, whoever that person is, whatever that person is going to do, that's the end. And 
these eighteen percent are the people that can be swayed by ten thousand, that can be swayed by five thousand. So those of us who know better, who cannot be easily swayed, even if you collect the money, you know what you want to do. We stay off. We don't vote. If you think your vote is not going to count, why do you think politicians are paying for the vote? So I beg you in the name of God, get your PVC. And then once that period has ended, we will come back to how to make sure you vote right, wisely and rightly. There is a link that is going around now where uh, there is some poll going on to just do some shadow voting. The whole essence is to give everybody confidence that your vote can really count. It will be shared with you in the course of the week. Complete it, share it again in your network. Let's build confidence that we don't have, we are not, we are not saying, there is nothing that is sentencing us to the two big parties, nothing. So I'm not saying don't vote for any of the two big parties, but I'm saying that if we have enough movement, you can actually vote for somebody else and we can defeat the two big parties. And we will not be the first to do it. We will not be the first to, first to do it. So, but the first thing right now is please don't mind the trouble. I beg you in the name of God, go and get your PVC and then we'll come back to it. Because after God is government. After God is government. Government can take one decision that will render your entire portfolio equal to zero. That can destroy your entire estate. That can... Okay, I think the election poll has been put on the on the chat box now. Please, if you can pick it up from there. But if, if uh, John, can you also drop the Telegram, the Telegram um, link for those who want to join? So please, I don't know how to say this enough. Well, government will just wake up one day, take a decision, and all the business you've been planning, they will just equate it to zero. All the money you are holding in your hand will just be equal to zero, and you can't do anything about it. So while you can do something about it, let's do something about it. After God is government, it is too critical to be, to be acting like it does not concern me. It does concern us, and we that can do something about it, it is time to do something about it. And for those of you outside Nigeria, you have people in Nigeria, talk to them, encourage them to get involved. I will stop there so I don't go on and on because I'm extremely concerned and passionate about this. And we will do whatever we can do in our small sphere to make sure we move it along. All right. Okay, so the Telegram link is also now on the chat in the chat room. You may just want to pick it. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. And in the absence of any other question or clarification, it's been a wonderful time with the team. Thanks so much for coming. And we'll do it again in July by the grace of God. Enjoy the rest of the month and see you next month by God's grace. Thank you very much. Bye.